do with serials. So here are uh, here is the serials data set. Here are your brand types of cereal. So you've got Special K, you've got Oatmeal, Raisin, Crisp, Nutri-Grain, Wheats. You've got the manufacturer. Now, lots of people when they were doing this to start with, well, I would ask them to compare Kellogg's to Nabisco. And they go, where's Kellogg's? Where's Nabisco? Well, they're manufacturers. Now, because I had the value labels on, you could see Kellogg's and Nabisco. When I switch them off, because I can see that they've been recoded into single letters. This is important when I'm going to set up the comparison that I'm going to do. I have, instead of having just a single variable that I could look at, I have calories, proteins, fats, sodium, fiber, sugars, potassium, complex carbs. There's all these things that I can do t-tests between. So let's do a t-test between the carbohydrate content of Kellogg cereals and those for G, which is General Mills. So I'll go down to compare means. There's still independent samples t-tests. I pick, what did I was say I was going to do? I say complex carbs. Let's do carbohydrates. The grouping variable is manufacturer, define the groups. Now here there are more groups than the ones that I'm going to specify. So I want to compare K against G. And I go OK. So in this case, there are 23 cereals in from Kellogg's in the sample, 22 from General Mills. The mean amount of complex carbs is 15 in one and 14.7 in the other. The T test statistic is 0.344, so it's fairly small. It's got 40 degrees of freedom. The P value, because I don't know whether one is going to have more carbs than the other, they ju I'm just testing to see if they have different carbs. I'm looking for a two sided test. And the P value is 0.733. This is a large number. It's not below the critical cutoff of 0.05. So there is no difference in the carbohydrates content between Kellogg's and General Mills. That's done. The Cohen's D is tiny, close to zero, so there's no significant difference between them. And if you look at the confidence interval, it goes from negative to positive, so there's nothing happening here. I could repeat the process for whichever variables I want. So compare means independent samples, change it from complex carbs, I could change it to protein. Look at that, see if there's any difference. The test statistics, this, and so it's slightly larger than before. Still, p-value is not significant, nothing's happening there. Compare means, let's compare their salt content then. Sodium. Still nothing significant. Is there going to be anything significant with any of them? Good for potassium. No, nope, nothing different between any of them. The good thing about this is if it's correctly set up, Uh, if in the variable view, so you've got missing values correctly defined, it will ignore those values when it's calculating the t-tests and the means and the standard deviations. So SPSS is a very useful tool for doing these kind of comparisons very quickly. Do you think you're going to be able to do one of those tests? 